Hi, my name is Slavko Mocevic. I received the Bachelor's and Master's of Science degrees from University of Novi Sad, Serbia. Now I am pursuing a PhD degree in Power Electronics with the Center for Power Electronic Systems, Virginia Tech. My advisors are Dr. Borjevic and Dr. Burgos. My research interests are enhanced gate driver technologies for silicon carbide MOSFETs, modular converters, and high voltage power electronics design. In this video, I will be talking about the assessment of a medium voltage power cell based on a high current 10 kV silicon carbide MOSFET Hubridge module. High voltage fast switching, low losses silicon carbide MOSFETs enable simplification of power stage topologies, improving power density and efficiency of power electronic systems. This is particularly important for medium voltage applications where land and space are very limited and expensive, such as MVDC distribution in high populated urban areas, DC power systems for more electric ships, and renewable energy sources. MMC is increasingly considered due to the features of high modularity, voltage scalability, transformers operation, and low filter requirements. MMC fundamental piece is power cell. If kernel part is silicon carbide MOSFET, design is capable of achieving high efficiency and power density. Power cell objectives are capability for ICBT converter and switching cycle control. These enable extreme reduction in passive component size. Power density of 10 kV per liter, partial discharge free operation, 99% efficiency, and high common mode transient immunity. Operation at rated conditions is facing challenges of high voltage, high DVDT electromagnetic interference, and thermal management. Therefore, to qualify the power cell for converter operation, assessment methodology is developed. Before going into the assessment methodology, power cell will be introduced. The power cell design specifications are 6 kV at 84 amperes. The insulation system can maintain partial discharge free operation under 30 kV common mode voltage. Based on the dimension and processing power of 250 kW, the power density is 12 kV per liter. Power cell utilizes the latest generation of silicon carbide power modules by Cree. Three 10 kV XHV9 submodules are paralleled for high current. Forced air cooling system is used. It is comprised of a push-pull fan array combined with aluminum heatsink and an indium thermal pad interface between the module and the heatsink. High performance enhanced gate driver units are needed to maximize the utilization of silicon carbide MOSFET characteristics. Design gate driver enables fast communication with driving current up to 90 amperes with only five nano Henry loop inductance. For short circuit protection, with Rogowski coils, it's protecting the device in less than 1.5 microseconds. Gate driver has great common mode transient immunity since design current-based transformer power supply, which powers both gate drivers and sensor has only around two picofarad coupling capacitance. Apart from that, near ideal gate current sharing between the submodules is achieved, avoiding possible thermal issues due to the current imbalance. Design PCB planner busbar has a maximum E-field intensity lower than 20 kV per millimeter with no more than 2 kV per millimeter in air around it. After fabrication, the PCB bus is only about 5 mm thick and has only 8.8 .8 nano Henry power loop inductance. Weight is reduced by 50% compared to a conventional laminated counterpart. Chosen capacitor bank is only 32.5 microfarads. This PCB-based laminated bus is PD-free at normal operation voltage of 6 kV. At the power cell level, U-shaped shielded high-density single-turn inductor of 2 microhenries is designed for utilization in switching cycle control. All communications are realized with a fiber optics cable, greatly reducing noise-related issues. Power cell local controller is a part of a ring communication with the other controllers in MMC and it can achieve high synchronization accuracy of below one nanosecond. Within the power cell, star connection is realized to communicate with FPGAs on the gate driver while a ring topology is utilized to communicate with other auxiliary circuits. Power within the power cell is supplied by a wireless auxiliary power supply. It can deliver 120 watts with 90% efficiency, exhibiting only 2.8 picofarad insulation capacitance and more than 27 kV insulation capability. Rest of auxiliary circuits are discharge and precharge circuits, able to execute their tasks within 60 seconds, and mini UPS circuit, able to hold the auxiliary voltage within the power cell for several minutes in case of a power outage by a wireless power supply. Mission of assessment methodology is to characterize the capabilities of the power cell as well as to explore its limitations. First step is insulation testing investigating maximum differential and common mode voltage insulation capabilities of the power cell. 
This work was introduced by USU and Joshua Stewart in previous sections. Following that, system level test type will be determined after which safe operating area will be defined. SOA will be defined based on the device characterization and thermal model. Therefore, thermal limit of the power cell at the different conditions is known. Subsequently, a series of continuous tests are conducted to verify thermal management, DVDT transient immunity, and efficiency performance. At the end, decision will be made to determine should the power cell design be iterated. If passed, the power cell design is complete. First step is device characterization, completing the loss model. For more insight, please refer to a full paper. Second step is system level test. Chosen are regenerative tests. They are most suitable for high voltage, high power testing in lab condition. Two identical power cells are at the same DC bus voltage connected through inductor at the outputs. Third step is safe operating area. SOA will be defined for 50% duty cycle DC-DC converter operation for 150 degrees junction temperature. This condition has non-uniform loss distribution since higher power losses are concentrated on a single switch. The loss model is used to assign the both switches in power cell to find out what are the maximum allowable losses for the hard switching position to reach 150 degrees Celsius. Thermal limits under different switching frequencies will be determined through the thermal power cell model with FEA simulation. Other power cell limitations are 84 amperes imposed by the bus bar, 5 kilohertz from maximum allowable voltage ripple at DC link capacitors, and 40 kilohertz from the gate driver maximum power. Chosen test condition is 10 kilohertz, 84 amperes, 6 kilovolts. Fourth step is verification of cell operation. Both input and output voltages are average DC, as well as the inductor current with ripple in each switching cycle. Time between the two positive output voltages of two power cells has a fixed value calculated based on the desired inductor current ripple. Time between the two negative output voltages of two phase lags is calculated by a PI controller to regulate the average output current. The pumpback prototype is operating under the waveform pattern shown at 6 kV, 84 amperes, 100 volts per nanosecond, 10 kHz, circulating 252 kilowatt power in the system for two hours. Fifth step takes place after the power cell steady state temperature is reached. Temperature management is assessed with a base plate temperature of 73 Celsius. The simulation model shows generally lower base plate temperatures than the experimentally measured ones with differences of 4 to 8 Celsius. Comparing junction temperature between the two shows a similar discrepancy around 5 degrees. For better insight into the accuracy of a thermal model, base plate and junction temperatures have been comparing multiple points to the measured ones. The model shows the same trends with the measured and estimated values, with a maximum difference of 8 Celsius, which is acceptable considering the complexity of the system and its cooling. From a practical standpoint, having a thermal model that is 90% accurate is extremely valuable due to the difficulty in developing extremely accurate models in all possible scenarios. This inaccuracy should be carefully considered when assessing the developed SOA. Sixth step assesses possible DVDT related issues. For crosstalk with complementary device switching, according to the measured CRSS of 0.2 nanofarad under 100 volts per nanosecond, there will be 20 amperes injected into the gate of the device, which can create up to 9 volts on the gate source terminal. Voltage this high, combined with the low threshold voltage, can possibly create a shoot through. This implies that the Miller clamping circuitry is essential for successful cell operation to bypass the injected current. The performance and effectiveness of the implemented active Miller clamping circuit is shown. Under the extreme condition of 102 volts per nanosecond for the turn on event of the top switch, the crosstalk voltage spike has reached 0.3 volts, which is considered safe since it's well below the gate threshold voltage for all temperatures. For common mode transient immunity, the performance of the top gate driver switch has been investigated since it's on the jumping node, making that gate driver most vulnerable to common mode current. Under 102 volts per nanosecond, a top side total common mode current of 250 milliampere peak is measured with no common mode chokes along the path. This value verifies that the gate driver power supply coupling capacitance is close to the design values. According to the gate driver design, part of this measured common mode current should go through the signal circuitry. Even though that current is inaccessible, the top side power bus voltage of 3.3 volt for signal processing is measured. It exhibits an exceptionally noise-free performance with slight variation of 0.1 volt for transient events 
retaining its stable and clean performance. Lastly, power cell efficiency will be assessed. For detailed measurement process, probes, and calibrations, please refer to a full paper. Efficiency is measured at 6 kV for 5 and 10 kHz switching frequency after thermal steady state is reached. The measured efficiency is close to the estimated value based on the loss model, with maximum discrepancies in order of 0.35%. Maximum power cell efficiency is 99.6% for full load at 5 kHz, while at the light load is 98.6. At 10 kHz, efficiency is 99.3% for full load, while at light load is 97.5%. With efficiency characterization finalized, the assessment of the power cell is finished and the power cell design targets are met. To summarize, power cell successfully overcomes the simultaneously imposed challenges of high voltage, high DVDT, and thermal management. Power cell has 12 kV per liter power density, meanwhile preserving a PD-free operation at rated voltage and up to 30 kV DC bus converter voltage. Even with the forced air cooling system, power cell operating at 10 kHz processing 250 kilowatts exhibits high efficiency of 99.3%, which was impossible for silicon IGBT designs. Discrepancy between the estimated and the measured efficiency is only 0.35%, which verifies the accuracy of the developed loss model and gives a confidence in the device characterization methodology and SOA. This work was supported by the Office of Naval Research and ARPA-E from the Department of Energy please feel free to reach out to me by email about this research or any PowerCell PEB research being conducted in CPES. Thank you all for the attention during this video.